Hi, this is Ginevra's running commentary number 39. And today I'm going back to breathing. I've dealt with breathing in different ways in other films that I've made. If I'm saying the same thing again, it's probably because it needs to be said. If I'm saying something new, then that's to celebrate. Today, I really want to think about how one structures the teaching of breathing and the management of breathing for different bodies, different types, different people, because there isn't a one size fits all. There is not one rule that, that fits all. The only rule is that we're providing the air pressure and air flow needed for the rest of the system. So supposing you have somebody who is uh, already very aware of their own body. They may be a trained dancer. They may be a martial arts expert. They may be somebody who works out in the gym a lot. They have got a strong, well-developed core support musculature. They don't need to work hard. They don't need to feel that they're working hard. It's all going to be there. For them, it's a question of releasing letting go, trusting the body. So if somebody is very well trained in that abdominal area already, I will do a lot of movement work. I will do the sort of moving the hips around while they sing. I will do moving the body around while they sing, just to make sure that nothing is gripping and nothing is pushing. Trusting, trusting that the body will do it. The brain is very clever at working out what it needs the breath mechanism to supply. Supposing you have a student who is really unaware of their body. Somebody who sits at a desk all day, doesn't really do exercise, doesn't enjoy exercise, and hasn't got that somatic awareness of what's going on in their body then there will need to be a little bit of training. Now, again, that person, even if they have a sedentary life, their abdominal muscles are still capable of moving their body around. They can still walk, they can still sit up, they can still do things that require quite a lot of strength compared with the amount of strength that you need to exhale. So once again, we're not feeling that the muscles are working hard, we're just coordinating them. So this may be somebody who, when they go to sing, lifts everything up and grips tight, hard in their midriff. So for them, I would do a lot of slow drills. So these are the kind of slow exercises where we focus attention on the lower abs and we would do very gentle shh, shh, little hissing and buzzing exercises, just to bring attention to that area, take it away from everywhere else in the body. And that, that takes quite a lot of coordination. I normally start lying on the floor um, and then sitting, maybe going onto all fours is quite a useful one because there you've got gravity uh, helping you to release those muscles for every inhalation. So very gentle hissing and buzzing for the exhalations and then a release for the inhalation. And the release is not a collapse. It's not everything just letting go. It is just the abdominal muscles letting go to allow the air into the rest of the body. So those drills, you just repeat. Boring repetition over and over again, like any physical drills for any coordinated exercise. Do them over and over again, and those pathways form in the brain, and the brain will learn, aha, that's what I do when I want to manage that airflow and coordinate the airflow. Every individual comes into your teaching studio with different needs and different requirements, different understanding of their body, and therefore they need a different response and to be trained in a different way. So you need to get to know your student, get to know what they're good at, get to know what they, what else they do in their 
lives, what kind of movement, exercise, how they use their body. Then you can help them to understand how to use their body at its best when they're singing.